Hello and welcome to lesson number 7.3. We will take care of network analysis in this lesson. So the exercise data comes along with the predefined project already. So let's open this up. I have this already. Don't save. This is called network.qgz. Let's open this. So now we have here a QGIS project which consists of network lines and network points. Let's have a look on this network lines. First of all, check the properties just to make sure that we really know what we are talking about, okay? So we have a multi-line string with seven features and it has CRSS, uh, WGS, 84, Pseudo Mercato. Remember the last lesson? So it's um, Pseudo Mercato based on meters somehow. We still use the coordinate reference system of South Africa. That is not good at all. But um, we'll take 34. No, we will take 32 north. Yeah, 32 north will be much better. So I've changed the projection now to fit our needs. But this is not what we will concentrate on. Network analysis is always about how to get from A to B. How much time does it take or how far is it on a network and this network lines is to be quite honest it's quite a simple network so we have geometries we have some attributes let's have a look on the attribute table there's a column for speed for directions and there is an fid and sort of some sort of highway information so what was part of the data set because I really think that this is part of the OSM standard. So these layers were somewhat extracted, maybe a little bit streamlined to make the vertices not so uh, not so dense. And we have stripped down some attributes to the most important one. And we, uh, all the guys at KeyGIS, have created a very good representation with the layer styling. So we have uh, labels. 20, meet, 20 kilometers per hour, 100 kilometers per hour. We have different directions indicators or direction indicators. And we would like to ask ourselves, okay, how, how can I get from there to there? So what is the shortest connection? We have an assumption, okay? So shortest string, uh, shortest line should be this direction, right? So let's open up the processing. And here we have network analysis. And we will, we are interested in the shortest path path from point to point. Shortest path. Um, also in the background, there's a thing called called Jijkstra algorithm. Um, I'll highlight a video for this as well. How this works. So it tries to minimize the effort or the cost from going from A to B. And um, shortest means in this term, first of all, the distance. So. From a distance perspective, we will work on the network lines. We are interested in shortest, not fastest. That's a big difference here. We will select the start point. This is an uh, interactive selector. So there's no crossfade or something like that. Press there and the coordinate is used. Press for the endpoint. You don't need to be exactly on the line. You could be a little bit off the line. That's not an issue at all. So now we have everything in place. We'll take a look at the advanced parameters later on. So we'll just press on run. We'll close this now. There's now a new shortest path here in Malay tree. Let's move this upwards and have a look. Now, this is the shortest path going from A to B, exactly as we have um, thought about, right? Next lesson, sometimes shortest path is it's cool. Yeah, I know that I have to go this way to take it at, to be to have a low effort to go from A to B, right? Um, but sometimes you're interested in the fastest, uh, fastest or, or shortest path in terms of speed. So will this really be shorter? How, how, how long will this take? So we will go with fastest. And um, once again, select start point on the network or near the network, select endpoint near the network where you would like to go, press on run, 
and now you have another shortest path which is to be quite honest more or less the same right so there's no difference but we will have now a difference in the data set itself so let's have a look here on this shortest path it says well the cost is 0 0.018 what is this hmm. hours minutes seconds not really sure but I assume that these are minutes. Let's have a look here on the shortest path. The cost is 907 meters, so let's use the measurement tool and measure alongside this one, just in a very coarse manner. And yeah, we are here with 935 meters. So that's quite close for from a measurement perspective. Let's have a look here once again. So that is one kilometer. We have nothing decided yet according to speed or whatsoever. So it's 0 0.018 minutes, no, hours, most likely hours, right? So let's have a look at the at the shortest at the advanced parameters. And yes, it is ours. So now we are dealing here with 50 kilometers per hour. For a distance of one kilometer, you can assume something like like one minute or something like that to drive this. And um, we can change this. So now it reflects somehow the 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 uh, travel speed of a car. So let's go once again the fastest start point and end point will be the same sometimes it's a little bit obscure this dialogue here because i need to move the values here uh, we have a direction field so we will use the direction field optional on not on the shortest path on not network lines so direction field is direction value for forward direction is zero backwards is uh, one and the value for both is two and now we will switch this to travel speed of a person right four kilometers per hour let's create the shortest path once more it is still the same line it's the same geometry let's have a look on the on the features and now it's the costs are higher how much is it in minutes let's open up the attribute table create a new field using the field calculator we will create a new decimal number real all time min which is the value of so we look into the fields cost times 60 and 30 minutes for rough roughly one kilometers is just a group a recent value right a reasonable value so we will take this into account now sometimes this might not be the really fastest way to go, right? So have a look here at the, at the attributes. You can see that there's a travel speed limitation of 20, and we have not taken into account this travel speed limitation for, for the moment, especially not by, for driving by car. So there's a circular pattern here where you can drive 100 kilometers per hour. So we will choose this. Once again, go with fastest, We'll say, well, there is start point and there is an end point once again, right? So we will not work on shortest path, we will work on network links. Endpoints are valid. Let's have a look on the advanced parameters. We will go with the default speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Direction field is there. Once again, we will go with zero, one, and two. And default direction, if there's no value given, we assume that this is both directions and we have a speed, speed field. Let's go there. And we are trying to travel with 50 kilometers per hour. So run again.
in the editing session here. No, we don't want to save this. And now let's have a look where the path was going, was heading to. Oh, it's taking the long route, right? So we're going from there to there using the uh, fastest way. And this is just fine. So let's have a look here on the attribute table. The cost is 0 0.02. And here is the cost 0 0.01, which is different. But this was not so much a valid approach because it was not taking into account the speed limitation of 20 kilometers per hour. So this is a way to deal with network analysis to go from A to B and how long, how much time it takes, right? So let's have a look on another question, which is a service area. What, what endpoints of my on my network can I reach in a given time or in a given distance? In the last lessons, we talked about I need to be around a school in a distance of 500 meters, but that was not taking into account the geometry at all. It was just like line of sight distance. And this is somehow old fashioned because we cannot walk like the crow flies. We need to walk on paths. We need to drive on highways. We need to use our bicycle on bike lanes and whatsoever. So we are always limited to a network. And therefore, this network analysis is a very important step to choose in your everyday work. So let's go ahead and create a service area from a layer. We will create the vector layer representing the network or we will use the network lines and the vector layer with start points is given in the network points. We will try to have a look at the shortest path first. So we are now asked to add here the distance. Well, let's assume it's 250 meters. We have a direction field once again. Let's say zero, one and two. Default speed is 50 kilometers per hour, so we will we we can go. No, the time it will take is is, is lower. We will create the service area lines, and we will create also the service area boundary nodes. So let's press and run. Now this is now the given um, service area. Right, so let's open up OSM standard for this and choose a different symbology for the service area, highlighted in red. So from this point and this point, these are the 250 meter distances and the boundary nodes. So what nodes of the word of the network layer are inside the given distance are highlighted here. So that's a very cool thing, and it does not take any real API or it doesn't take any costs on your side so you can move or use this uh, right along um, especially if you're having some OSM standard data set already there at hand which provides some of the information you need for proper analysis sometimes the values of travel speed or directions are not filled in uh, by the OSM user so take a look maybe at the at the real world then um, and there are other ways of of course creating those service areas or these isochron analysis i will call them and i would like to highlight one other plugin that is called hqgis it requires an here api account so let's you can get this online for free and uh, let's have a look here how this will work out for our given time so we will work with an isochrome on multiple addresses on the network points. We will use same as a start. We will take care of the distance of 250 meters. And let's add some other distance values there as well. And we will go with travel type car. And these are now the isochrones for 250 meters. 500 meters and 1000 meters so there's a different data set in the back back end so we are not using the uh, street network anymore but the here data set 
and this is giving the the isochrone so in green in light green 250 meters so this worked quite well with the with our analysis and then we have 500 meters and 1000 meters to reach by but you can also switch over to time and let's go with 60 seconds 100 or two minutes three minutes and four minutes once a car once again with the car and now we can see the isochrones for those given time frames quite a cool tool i really loved it and uh, you can also play around with the with the time schedule so let's have a look here on the on the data sets so first of july 2020 and let's have a look on the on the given time at, at 8 a.m this is a little bit smaller than you can see it here and if we increase this or if we change this time to two o'clock in the morning we can go a little bit further further so that's a co cool plugin i will have a look at it at the plugins uh, lesson later on but first of all take into account you can do network analysis and service area analysis already using the built-in network analysis tools using service area from layer or point and shortest path algorithm here in choosing the Jake algorithm in the background uh, to gain an idea um, how far it is to go from A to B on a given network um, with the attributes of distance, direction, and uh, not distance, um, speed, direction, and um, to have a proper topology. You can see all the nodes are well aligned here, so they are connected, so it's easy to get from this line to this line using a, a common node. If you have any questions, just drop me a comment, and I will answer them right away. Otherwise, see you in lesson 7.4. Thanks again for watching, take care, and goodbye.